A parable found in the most ancient sources permits us to get a clear picture of this. And so keep this condition in mind. It is the parable of the coach. This image represents uh, the characteristics of man by a coach. The physical body is represented by the coach itself. The horses represent sensations, feelings, and passions. The coachman is the ensemble of the intellectual faculties, including reason. The person sitting in the coach is the master. In its normal state, the whole system is in a perfect state of operation. The coachman holds the reins firmly in his hands and drives the horses in the direction indicated by the master. This, however, is not how things happen in the immense majority of cases. First of all, the master is absent. The coach must go and find him and must then await his pleasure. All is in a bad state. The axles are not greased and they grate. The wheels are badly fixed and the shaft dangles dangerously. The horses, although of noble race, are dirty and ill-fed. The harness is worn and the reins are not strong. The coachman is asleep. His hands have slipped to his knees and hardly hold the reins which can fall from them at any moment. The coach nevertheless continues to move forward, but does so in a way which presages no happiness. Abandoning the road, it is rolling down the slope in such a way that the coach is now pushing the horses which are unable to hold it back. The coachman, fallen into a deep sleep, is swaying in his seat at risk of falling off. Obviously, a sad fate awaits such a coach. This image provides a highly appropriate analogy for the condition of most men, and it is worth taking as an object of meditation. So, uh, salvation may, however, present itself. Another coachman, this one quite awake, may pass by the same route and observe the coach in its sad situation. If he is not in much of a hurry, he may perhaps stop to help the coach that is in distress. He will first help the horses hold back the coach from slipping down the slope. Then he will awaken the sleeping driver, and together with him will try to bring the coach back to the road. He will then lend fodder and money. He might also give advice on the care of the horses, the address of an inn and a coach repairer, and indicate the proper route to follow. It will be up to the assisted coachman afterward to profit by his own efforts from the help and the information received. It will be incumbent on him from this point on to put all things in order and open-eyed to follow the path he had abandoned. He will above all fight against sleep, for if he falls asleep again and if the coach leaves the road again and again finds itself in the same danger, he cannot hope that chance will smile upon him a second time that another coachman will pass at that moment and at that place and come to his aid once again.